Mm. Nice, yeah. yeah, 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 but you need that undisturbed time. Well, and one of the things that is clear to me is that businesses have seasons, and, and we as individuals have seasons, and often I think, especially in my experience of internet marketing, there's an expectation that you are going to just continue to produce at the same level, yeah. and the same is true for uh, content and YouTube, right? Like you have to produce a video every single week without fail if you want to continue to be successful. And this is actually a recipe for burnout. We need to have variety. You know, this is true of our sex life as well. It's like it's just true of, of, of what it means to be a human being is that we need to have seasons of rest. We need to have seasons of high production. We need to have seasons of creation. We need to have seasons of harvesting what we've created. And one of the ways that we have manage that within this business is I get to kind of focus in on coaching for a little bit and then I pop back out and then I get to focus on content creation a bit and then I pop out and then I get to focus on like an external project like the television show that we're working on right now and then I come back and then I rest too you know we've, we've, I'm building in proactively opportunities for me to rest the, the more I can get out ahead of each of the, you know, filming content in batches, hiring the right people to offer the services that I used to offer one-on-one -on -one allows me to recharge my own battery. And that way I don't have to expect the exact same thing for myself all the time. Something I think is really tempting is when you find something that works, you keep doing it and doing it and doing it over and over until it doesn't work anymore. And I want to actually do it until it's not calling to me so much anymore. Hand it over to someone else, keep it fresh by injecting new blood into it, and then make space for me, because I, I, I'm a creative at the end of the day. I think a lot of people who have an expertise but haven't necessarily monetized it, we are creatives. And sometimes it's very hard to monetize your art. Then that's what I, there's a, there's a, um, there's a sweet spot for creatives because you do have to monetize. It was very hard for me at first to acknowledge that there were things that I needed to do in order to be a successful internet marketer that maybe didn't mesh so well with what I needed to do to be a successful academic or what I needed to do to be a successful creative. And finding a spot where I could be ethically engaged and feel like the marketing that we were doing was, was truthful and honest and authentic, but also making those promises because on the internet, people need a big promise, right? If you don't make big promises, you don't sell courses because everyone else is making huge promises, right? So why would you go with the course that's like realistically A, B, or C instead of the bombastic, here's the results that you're going to get and here's your 90 day money back guarantee and it's going to be incredible. Well, as an academic, you never make those sort of claims ever, right? If you ever read like research papers, they're very, very soft and like we think based off of the results that we're seeing here that maybe there's a causation relationship. I had to go all the way to the extreme other side, which is being very confident in the claims that you're making, which the internet really requires and finding a place where both of those could coexist. It took a little bit of time for me to land in that sweet spot between where I came from and where I was going. So this this first this this like discomfort that I was feeling first came up with YouTube videos because I needed to create catchier, more interesting, I'm not going to say necessarily clickbaity, but, but thumbnails and video titles that could compete with the nonsense and the, the less quality material that was out there. I realized that it actually does not matter what I say inside of a video if no one clicks on it. And the same is true for the course. It doesn't matter how good the content of my course is if no one buys it because I haven't sold it appropriately. And so I think of myself a little bit like a Trojan horse. Like my content is dressed up as one thing on the outside. Like I have a video that's like, make her swallow. Like as an educator, as a feminist, as a woman, I'm a little bit irked by this video title, like make her swallow. It's like, oh, okay. I don't know that I want my partner making me do anything in bed. But if you click on the video and you watch it, it's actually all about understanding from a woman's perspective what oral sex is like for her, the messages that she's gotten, the expectations that she has, the influence of porn, the influence of slut shaming. It's a video that is really important for men to watch, but most men, the average man, isn't going to click on a video that's like, 
understanding swallowing from a feminist perspective. Like, no one's clicking on that, right? But they do click on Make Her Swallow. And so the Trojan horse is that the quality of the information that I'm able to transmit is there, but I have to dress it up as something that's more seductive. And I think a lot of people are sales resistant because they've had so many bad experiences being sold to, and it was non-consensual, right? It wasn't, thinking about it again from a sex perspective, when someone is forcing something onto you and you're not giving your consent to receive it, it feels yucky. But when I am making an offer to someone inside of a video, I'm saying, hey, if this was interesting to you in this free content and you wanna take it a little bit deeper, I have some paid content, feel free to check it out. Click over here, this is what I can promise you, this is the guarantee that I'm making to you. To me, that's not icky at all. To me, that's, that's my responsibility. It is actually an obligation that I have. If I have information that's going to change your life and I keep it from you, because I don't want to be salesy, I'm failing both of us. But more importantly, I'm not fulfilling on my obligation as someone who has specialized information that could help you. All I need to do is dress it up and offer it to you in exchange for your money. And you're very willing to pay me because it really matters to you if I can solve your problem. So I think that sales is actually, it actually is very ethical. It's actually morally, Import, it's actually, you actually have a moral obligation to sell things to people who will benefit from them, especially if you're actually an expert and you really believe in what it is that you're saying. You're morally obligated to get that information to the people who need it. It's been really important to me to create something that is quality so that I can have a sustainable business, as opposed to creating something that I can make a quick buck off of and almost like trick people into purchasing and then on to the next thing. I really care about the person on the other end and that they get the result or the outcome that I am being entrusted to create for them. And even though it may be a little bit slower of a process to create a quality product, to create to create a quality product and to get it into the hands of the right people and to finesse that sales process and the marketing process, it's so worth it because it's a sustainable process. I have people who have purchased one of my courses. They got a lot of value out of it. We have a trusting relationship. They purchase another course. They end up coming to me for coaching. They invest then at a ten or $15,000 level, something that started with free content because I was producing quality for them throughout the entire process. So. I'd say if you are interested in getting started in this, make sure that you have passion for what it is that you're doing, that you can actually deliver on the promises that you are going to make, that you're clear that you have the obligation to sell because people need this content and in order for them to value it, often they need to trade money in exchange for your expertise. And make sure that you are compassionate towards this person, right? The, the people that buy my products are not just dollar signs. Uh, they're real human beings that are trying to create a better relationship or a better sex life or be healthier or be more complete or be happier. As long as you treat others in the way that you would want to be treated, as long as you bring the same level of care and consideration and compassion to the end user throughout the entire process, whether they're watching your free content or they're paying your highest rate for your most engaged offering. I think the secret to being successful is just truly caring about the end user fully. I, an online course is, for me, a collection of videos that have a structured flow and content that someone at home can access through their phone or through their computer at their own pace. For me, I've always included, in addition to videos, audio files and a workbook because I believe in hitting someone in their... Uh, uh, I, I believe in creating something for the visual learners, for the audio learners, and for the kinesthetic learners. But for me, a video course comes down to education as well as entertainment. And it is a curriculum that unfolds in a way that can create a change for someone. I want to create a transformation. So you start at this end of the course, 
with this problem. And by the end of the course, we're going to have given you all the tools that you need to see transformation with that problem. And we'll get you to the next step, the next stage. I don't need to solve all of someone's problems. I need to solve one problem through a structured series of videos. And that's a video course.